how to protect ourselves from the coming coronavirus storm and unfortunately it is coming to all our nations we outside of Asia are probably no more than a couple of weeks away from when the coronavirus pandemic starts to inflict damage on our societies and economies as we have been witnessing take place in China as the virus outbreak takes hold so that there's no confusion that we really are in the calm before the coronavirus storm stage Sheffield Britain's fifth largest city like the rest of Britain's big cities is in the calm before the coronavirus storm stage where barely a couple of weeks from now everything is likely to change when coronavirus outbreaks start taking place across the UK because unfortunately the NHS is barely able to cope with regular winter flu let alone a strain that is a hundred times as deadly so the NHS will soon be overwhelmed with seriously ill patients requiring intensive care and it won't take more than a dozen such patients to tip the healthcare systems over the edge in each of Britain's big cities such as Sheffield unable to cope with even small volumes of coronavirus ill where the only response to 111 calls will be for patients to self-quarantine themselves at home as hospitals become hotbeds for the transmission of the virus so places definitely to stay clear of to avoid becoming infected This week the people of Britain got a taste for how the coronavirus epidemic is going to break out in the UK as apparently a Chinese woman infected with the coronavirus flew from China to the UK before she was put into quarantine in China boarded a flight to the UK with no regard to the risks of infecting fellow passengers on the plane no regard to the staff and thousands of passengers at Heathrow Airport where instead of declaring that she was infected with a killer virus on arrival went through customer and border control exited the airport and then proceeded to take an uber taxi without regard to the driver or his family or the other passengers who would ride in the uber after her to a nearby Lewisham hospital walking into a &E department without regard to the staff and patients sat there effectively declaring that I am ill with coronavirus or so please give me treatment on the NHS this Chinese person's actions as those of another pair in York a couple of weeks ago have once more sent health officials scrambling to track down and test everyone who has been in contact with the infected person including putting several members of staff at Lewisham Hospital into quarantine However, there appears to be a delay of about four days before the general public are informed of infection incidents, which just like China risks losing control of outbreaks. This illustrates why the coronavirus outbreaks in Britain and across the rest of the world are inevitable. The Chinese Communist regime's propaganda of the past week of having brought the coronavirus outbreak under control by referring to daily falling infection rates from a peak of about 4,500 to 2,000 has now been completely blown away following the declaration of a huge 33% jump in the number of infections i.e. 15,000 totaling 60,000 Thursday also the number of deaths jumped sharply higher to 1369 from 1115 this begs the question of how many cases and deaths in the preceding weeks are missing from the graph which illustrates why I've been stating for several weeks that China's coronavirus statistics just cannot be trusted where the true number of infections and deaths could easily be triple the official data so the 15k jump in one day should not be so surprising given that China is hitting capacity constraints its ability to diagnose cases of and deaths as the primary objective is to halt the pandemic rather than the count numbers so even those suspected of being infected are being isolated by force or told to go home and self quarantine far away from the overflowing hospitals and medical centers thus greatly masking the true number of infections 
Coronavirus spread day 68 update. My forecast for the number of infections and deaths by the 14th of February 2020 versus actual reported. Forecast infections 154,000, actual reported 65,000, so 42% difference. Deaths 4,334, actual 1,491, that's 34%. Were this trend to continue into the end of February 2020, then the number of infected would total 421,000, whilst the number of deaths would total 9,630. So the latest data implies a lower spread, but still a relatively high mortality rate of about 2.3%. In reality, the actual number of infections and deaths is likely closer to the forecast than what China's healthcare system hitting capacity constraints implies. As for some weeks, all those even suspected of being infected are not being met by medical staff but by a barely protected army of police. The fact that China is grossly underreporting the number of cases translates into a the number of infections outside of China will continue to rapidly increase as contact with infected Chinese people acts as sparks for epidemics elsewhere. B that the outbreak in China will fail to subside, which is what it should do if Chinese statistics were accurate, i.e. the pandemic would basically come to an end within a couple of weeks or so. But instead I expect the number of infections to continue at a high rate for several more months. So I still expect the actual pool of infected to pass 1 million towards the end of February and thus the risks of a global pandemic remain highly probable and that there are large susceptible populations with poor healthcare infrastructure such as India that announced its first infections over a week ago where outbreaks could quickly overwhelm healthcare systems. Also that a vaccine is still a good four months away so far too late to have any impact on this pandemic. The bottom line is not to be fooled by coronavirus statistics out of China. The pandemic is not under control and the number of infected has likely already passed 150,000. With likewise the number of deaths exceeding 2,000 or near twice the official number, the evidence of which is literally being cremated. Therefore given the actual continuing rate of spread of the virus in China, and the forecast and trajectories for the rest of the world is currently one of being in the calm before the storm stage with likely several outbreaks that risk overwhelming healthcare systems around the world as has happened in China. What's more worrying is that when one looks at the world map apparently there are no cases of the virus in Africa or South and Central America. That is very hard to believe instead suggest there are hidden outbreaks underway in those regions that will only make the light of day when the body bags start piling up. Until then don't be fooled into a false sense of security. The pandemic is coming to your nation. UK Coronavirus Trend Forecast 2020 Taking account the actual trend trajectory of China's outbreak and allowing for the fact that China is under reporting the number of cases by at least 50% and that the UK is expected to be more open in reporting and handling of coronavirus cases thus with a better informed public should prove better able to contain coronavirus outbreaks even if there currently exists a 4 day lag that is not good. Thus my forecast conclusion is for the UK to target a trend towards 5,000 infections by the end of March 2020 which will likely result in over 1,000 hospitalizations and unfortunately some 90 deaths which was putting the NHS under extra strain however Britain should be able to cope with the outbreaks up to that point. So I expect the number of infections to only really start taking off early March when the number infected past 100 and soon start to accelerate into the hundreds. Early March is also when I unfortunately expect the first reported death 
as a consequence of coronavirus, at which time there will increasingly be economic consequences, especially for the travel, holidays, retail and event sectors, as consumer behaviour will undoubtedly change in attempts to avoid the risk of infections, as we have witnessed in China, where the huge mega cities the size of London have turned into ghost towns that would likely be replicated in outbreak hotspots across the UK. So how to protect ourselves from the coronavirus storm? Firstly, wash your hands. Wash frequently because there's a good chance we are going to come into contact with the virus at some point. So the frequency at which one washes one's hands could be critical to whether we get the virus or not, i.e. buys us time for the next year when the vaccine will be out. There will be virus particles all over the place on doors, handles, chairs, tables and various other objects. Buttons such as lift buttons, cash machines, chip and pins and currency. So the number one thing to do is to get used to washing your hands more frequently and avoid touching your face and mouth. What about gloves? Well, they're pretty much useless. Since you've got to take the gloves off and wash your hands anyway, that and everything you touch will be contaminated. So offers a false sense of security. The main thing is to wash your hands frequently and properly. Secondly, wear a mask when going out, both to protect oneself and others if you're already infected. Some masks offer more protection than others, as most of the surgical masks that you see people wearing in Asian countries have gaps at the sides and easily become moist and thus will attract viral particles rather than offer protection. And then you have to dispose of the masks used and to wash your hands after disposing of the masks. Thirdly, avoid large crowds. Avoid queues, public events, shopping centres, in close spaces with large gatherings, i.e. cinemas. Avoid places where people have been in contact with travellers from China, which is the primary conduit for the spread of this virus. So don't take any chances avoid Chinese people for a few weeks at least as they are most likely to have been in contact with infected people from China and thus are at a higher risk of being infected than the general population and avoid places that could have transmissible viral particles such as universities gain in the first instance due to a large population of Chinese students that have already been proven to be sparks for infections in the UK and elsewhere. Avoid using public toilets and of course avoid hospitals. That as was the case in Wuhan are likely to be hotspots for the transmission of viral particles. As again as happened in the UK recently when an infected Chinese national turned up to a &E, then potentially went on to infect members of staff and patients. So avoid hospitals, avoid taking taxis and other public transport, and of course avoid airports and airplanes. Avoid, basically avoid enclosed spaces. At the moment, schools in the UK are fine, but come early March, then they could soon become transmission points for the virus that schools and colleges that will soon follow universities and being hotspots for transmission. So it's highly likely as the outbreaks start to happen in the UK from early March, then schools in those areas will start to be closed, where by the end of March, it is likely that most UK schools will be closed. And uh, of course, that would be good timing because it'll be the Easter holiday. So that the timing will be in line with Easter holidays which may be then extended for the whole of April. So the holidays might begin a week earlier and end a week later. So factor that into your timing of what to expect during March and April. 
and at some point we will all we are going to have to stop going to work as soon as the virus starts to spread amongst the workforce so prepare now in advance for the exposure to viral particles by avoiding physical contact with other people so no more handshakes hugs or kisses and practicing good hand hygiene definitely avoid people who look ill i.e. the coughing and sneezing Fourthly, when going home, disinfect your jacket and shoes so that you don't introduce viral particles into your home. Don't forget to periodically wipe your smartphones and then wash your hands afterwards. Wipe down surfaces and all handles with disinfectant, such as car door handles, house doors, wherever hands may have been in contact with. Fifthly, boost your immune system. At this time of year, lack of sun means that most people are going to be deficient in vitamin D. So taking a vitamin D supplement will help boost your immune system. Better still will be a good multivitamin. Not the cheap ones, but a good one. That say has at least 10 IU of vitamin D and 50 milligrams of vitamin C amongst others. Beyond that, eat plenty of fresh fruit and vegetables for vitamins and minerals in their natural form. Especially citrus fruits for vitamin C, nuts for vitamin E and good fatty acids. As they and vitamin B6 rich foods such as chicken, salmon and tuna, from which vitamins will be better absorbed than from supplements. Exercise regularly to keep your cardiovascular system healthy. Whilst it may be a bit late to lose some excess weight, still you should try and shed some pounds. If nothing else, you'll be in better shape for summer. And if you smoke, well, now really is the time to quit. Data out of China suggests smokers are at the highest risk of becoming seriously ill with coronavirus. So we have perhaps a dozen days to practice and prepare ourselves for the coming coronavirus storm. Practice and share this information with your family and friends and hopefully we'll make it through to the other side of this pandemic as it is expected to start to peter out as soon as temperatures rise so hopefully we'll have passed its peak early May. Stay safe and keep well. The device on the classroom. Yes, if you're going to use cash machine, then remember to wash your hands afterwards so you don't get infected off the Sorry. keypad. I know you can't even Cash, now. right, quiet. <laughs> cash withdrawal. And now, other. <laughs> 200. Oh, I'm infected. Ah. Yeah. This is correct. Like a seat. I have the virus on my hand. I'm going to have to wash my hand. Don't touch your mouth. Don't touch people's faces or mouths or nose. Otherwise, you'll get infected. So, where's my money then? Oh, yeah, the money's going to be infected as well. You're gonna have to wash your money. So all this money's gonna have virus on it. Yeah. Now you're infected. You're all infected now. The money's got coronavirus on it. No, I'm not touching that money. No, I'm not touching that money. It's got coronavirus all over it. What are you doing? You're infected. You have to wash the money first. You have to wash it before you can use it, you stupid. You have to wash it. Good hand hygiene to prevent getting the coronavirus. Remember to wash the money before you use it. And wash your hand and don't touch your face. Yes, yes, yes. She's, she's painting again.